Oh, good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. So glad that we can gather together and worship the Lord. Uh, it's been a crazy week, hasn't it? And uh, I, it looks like there really isn't any uh, with some of the things going around uh, around us. It doesn't look like things will change this next week. But we can gather together and we can worship our Lord and Savior. Amen. And in doing so, uh, when we get together uh, with our church family, we, get, we encourage each other. We gain strength. From being together, focusing solely on Jesus Christ. And that's why we're here. And so welcome those that are watching our, our live stream. Welcome. Glad that you can uh, join in with us. And may we just encourage each other this morning as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I want to remind everyone about our 31 days of prayer um, that are continuing this week. You see day 6 through 12 that's in our bulletin. Uh, new ones will come out in the weekly visit this week. But uh, you see day 6. I hope that we're not just stopping praying for our nation on just day 6 and then going to something else. May we just continue each and every day lifting up our nation, lifting up our leaders, um, we're commanded in Scripture to do that, amen? Uh, we're even commanded to pray for those that we may not agree with. But God's Word is what is our foundation. It is our, 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 our book of principles. And may we, may we be praying, may we join together. Also, as we pray together, may we read God's Word together. If you haven't picked up a a uh, reading, a Bible reading guide for the year. If you'd like one, they're out in the, the Welcome Center. Uh, from very fast pace to, a, you know, a lot slower pace. But each one at least will get you through God's Word in a year. And uh, may we read this year more than we did last year. And we draw encouragement when we uh, together are praying when we are together reading God's word. And so please, uh, please do that, okay? After services, we'll have a quick uh, business meeting going over our reports from this past uh, month. And so also uh, uh, remember that, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we worship. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. We pray worshiping you the creator of the universe, the everlasting Father, the Almighty God. And Lord, what a privilege it is to gather with your people in a time of unrest and turmoil, in a time of divisiveness, Lord, we can come together and, and, and solely just worship you, Lord. That's what we want to do this morning. Lord, your word promises that you're here your word promises that you hear us when we call on you. Lord, your word promises to answer. And Lord, our prayers, we are basing it all on the promises of your word. Lord, we, we ask that you'd be with our nation during this time. And our leaders. Lord, many do not know you as their savior. And Lord, I, I ask that somehow the message of Jesus Christ would cross their path once again, Lord, and that it would be the right time as your spirit is speaking to their hearts and they realize their condition. Lord, may you be sought for the wisdom needed to make the decisions that need to be done. Lord, we as a nation have gotten away from your word, your principles, Lord, draw us back. Lord, your word promises if your people will call on you, Lord, you will answer. And Lord, we're doing the very, that very thing. Lord, as we worship this morning, 
May you be honored. May you be glorified. Lord, I pray that as we go throughout uh, this service and in, into our individual lives, Lord, that we would just magnify your name for others to see. And Lord, most of all, we pray if there's one here this morning that has never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that your spirit would speak to their heart, draw them to you, Lord, and I pray that they'd realize their condition and put their faith and trust in Jesus. Lord, we love you so much, and it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray, amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this amazing, amazing eternal life you have given us, Lord. God, we are nothing without you. We are but broken pieces that you mend together for your good, Lord. God, I thank you so much for this free gift, that we are able to accept it, Lord, and that we would, we would run full-fledged into your love today, Lord. God, I thank you so much for just allowing us to worship you in this way. I pray that we would continue that through this time, Lord. I pray that we would truly be diligent in listening to the words you would speak to us today. God, I thank you so much for my church family and how they bless my life. I pray that today we would truly listen to the words you would speak. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have a copy of God's Word, I invite you to turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. There were two boys that were out in a large field playing hide and seek. How many of you remember those days of, of playing hide and seek? They were out in this field playing hide and seek. 
And the first boy would, would lean up against this one tree. And he would cover his eyes. And, and he began to count to a hundred. And the other boy would run across the field to this other tree. And he would skimmy up the tree. And, and he would hide up in the tree. And when the boy got done counting a hundred, ready or not, here I come. He would run across the field to the tree. He'd look up in the tree. Oh, I found you. Now it's your turn. The second boy would come down the tree, go across the field. He'd, he'd come up to the first tree and he would count. Starting with one going to a hundred. And then the first boy would run across the field to the tree. Up the tree he'd go. He'd hide in the tree. The, the second boy would get done talk, or counting a hundred. Ready or not, here I come. He would run across the field to the tree. Look up. Oh, I found you. Well, as they were doing this, there was a third boy came. And listen, you see people f playing hide and seek. What's the first response? Hey, can I play also? And he did the very thing. He came up to him and said, hey, can I play? And the two boys looked at each other. Looked at the third boy and said, no, you can't. We only have two trees. A whole field. And two trees. In the midst of them playing their game of hide and seek, they forgot that there's many different hiding places for them and others and isn't it true in playing hide and seek the more the merrier that, that that true hide and seek game the more you get involved the more enjoyable it is the more fun it is and i'm afraid sometimes we look at church just like the two boys did in the hide and seek. We get so used to, to doing things the way that we do them that we kind of get locked into to that rut. And the third one comes, hey, can we join? No, nope, sorry. We only have two trees. Well, you, you come in, it'll kind of mess up the, the way things are going. We, kinda, we come into church and, and we have a plan week to week. And, and guess what? We expect God to show up. We'll agree that we can't put God in a box, but boy, sometimes we sure try to stuff him in and, and hoping that this time that he could fit into the boxes that we may, and we expect him. Let's be honest. We expect him to work a certain way. We expect him to show up a certain way. A certain way that fits into to our, 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 our boundaries, our, our, our borders that we may, uh, we, we may uh, put up. And what happens is when we stop playing church in the same old ways, it's amazing how God shows up and how we encounter and experience the living God. And isn't that why we exist as a church? Our purpose as a New Testament church is what? Is to love God and to love people. And for that to happen, we exist, number one, to encounter God. First and foremost, for anything else to happen, we must encounter the living God. But the problem is, we'll agree that we want to encounter the living God, or at least we'll say the words we want to. But we want to encounter God on our own terms. We want to encounter God in our own ways. 
But when we look in Scripture, we see people encountering God in different parts of their life and in different ways. We see in Genesis, Adam and Eve encountered the living God. And their encounter was salvation. What did, what did God say? He told Satan, listen. You will get the hill, but your head's going to be crushed. And in encountering God, Adam and Eve learn all about salvation. What about Noah? God tells Noah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy all the people. Here's what I want you to do, Noah. I want you to build an ark. And in doing so, you and your wife and your sons and their wives, they'll have a place of safety. Well, if you're going to build an ark, a boat... You're going to need water, aren't you? I mean, this command was given to Noah when rain had not ever happened. And we see with Noah that there was an encounter of God for service. We see with Abraham in Genesis. I appeared to Abraham. I told Abraham, I have, I have heard the, the prayers of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to go down to sea. We see in Genesis chapter 18, Abraham approached God in, in an intercessory prayer. Isaiah talks about Abraham what, becoming a, a friend of God. He encountered God, and, and when he did, it was, it was intimacy. I wonder if this morning your encounter with God has to do with intimacy. Maybe it is service. Or maybe it's like Moses. His experience with God. He experienced God in a bush. Let me go see what's going on here. This bush is on fire and it's not burning up. And it's through that bush that, that God spoke to Moses. But how about when Moses was in, on the mountain and requested to see his glory? Maybe this morning, you just need to experience God. See, when he experienced God's glory, it changed Moses, didn't it? And when he came off that mountain, people noticed that he had been with God. Let me ask, when was the last time someone said, man, something's different about you? Man, I, I can tell that, that you, you've spent time with God. And see, Moses ex was, was just experiencing God. Maybe you're like Gideon. Remember when we first hear about Gideon and Judges? What's he doing? He is scared out of his wits down in, in the press, hiding out from, the, from the, the enemy. And, uh, and the Lord appeared unto Gideon and said, I am with you. And what does he call him? Mighty warrior. Maybe God, you need to experience God this morning and be reminded of what God sees in you and not what the world sees in you. Because, you know, many times we come into church and we're defeated people. Why? Because we don't see what God sees in us. And we make the call, well, what do I have to offer? Maybe you just need to be like Gideon and be reminded what God sees. When God says, you're the mighty war, I'm with you. You can rescue Israel. I am sending you to do it. Maybe you need an encounter like Elijah. Maybe you're this morning and 
You've come full of discouragement. You're beaten down. You're broken. Maybe you just need to experience God like Elijah did. What did God tell Elijah? I want you to go stand before me in the mountain. I want you to listen. Maybe we've been listening for God in the wrong places. What about Elijah? What happened? He went and listened in the windstorm and, and God wasn't there. He looked in the fire and he wasn't there. But where did Elijah find or hear from God? Is in the still, small whisper. Let me ask you this morning, how good's your ears? I'm not talking physically, but spiritually. How, how good your ears? Are, are you in a place where you can hear God speak? Because here's the deal. Not only should you want to encounter God, God wants to spend time with you. God wants to spend time with us. And see, God broke that discouragement with Elijah and gave him a task. Maybe you're like Isaiah and your dreams have collapsed. Very easy after this week. Let's be honest, it's very easy after this week to lose some hope. Amen? Anybody watch the news and very easy let some worry set in? What now? Oh Lord, what's going to happen? You know, in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that what? King Uzziah died. King Uzziah did some great things. You look into history, King Uzziah did some great things politically. Militarily, eco economically, everything that you would want in, in a leader, King Uzziah did. But guess what? Scripture says about him. He died. Listen, it's appointed and a man wants to die. Amen? He died. But what does it say about I What did Isaiah write? In the year that King Uzziah died, what happened? I saw the Lord. Maybe our problem is we've watching too much TV and we need to get our eyes and experience Almighty God. Maybe we, we need to have an experience that, that Isaiah had. His dreams collapsed. And I saw the Lord, what? Hi, am I sitting on a throne? And his robe filled the temple. Listen. We may, there may be some crazies that, that, that march on, on the Capitol and we think, oh, the desecration. Listen, no one's marching on the Lord's temple. Amen? No one's marching on the Lord's temple. His robe is filled. He's marching through. And when he moves, he doesn't need a Congress. He doesn't need a Senate. When he speaks, the walls shake. Things happen. When dreams collapse, maybe we need that kind of experience that, that Isaiah had in seeing the Lord. Or how about the experience that Paul had? In Acts chapter 9, it was, it was salvation and service. What will you have me to do? Who are you? How was he answered? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. I want you to preach God's word. Listen, my friends, it all starts with encountering the living God. When we encounter the living God, it changes everything about our lives. 
And we have the living God's words. And, and we find in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20 where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And, you know, so many times we want to use that with, well, we don't have that many here, but hey, God's here. Listen, it's not about us. It's about God is here. It's about Him. When we came into this place and we are gathering in His name, He is in the midst. Guess what that means? We are in the presence encountering the living God. The God that did things in each of these lives that are exemplified in Scripture is the God that is here. And I want us to look at this morning and a, a specific encounter that took place where lives were changed. That's why we, remembering, that's why we exist is to encounter the living God. In look, John chapter 4, and, and starting in verse 1, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed and again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. I love that verse. He must needs go through Samaria. Why? Because he knew there was an encounter going to take place. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the, the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his sons, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. We have this encounter set up. Jesus says, I must needs go through Samaria because Jesus knew that there was someone in Samaria that needed to encounter the living God. Guess what? Jesus already knows that what we need. Amen? Jesus already knows. We don't have to spell it out to him even though we try. Jesus already knows what we need. He knows what we need to encounter the living God. He knows that that lost person needs to meet Jesus Christ. He knows that encountering Him is where you get that encouragement. He knows that defeating that discouragement that may be in your life is found in encountering the living God. He knows, and guess what? Even though he, he, he not only knows, he knows how to get to that spot. Do you realize that? You don't have to tell him where, how to meet him. He's already there. Look, look what it says. He came and sat down on the well. Why? Because he knew at the right moment there was going to be someone that needed to encounter him. I want you to understand something this morning that encountering Jesus will not be what you expect. You can't put Jesus in a box. You can't say, okay, I'm going to meet you, but I want you to meet you, I want to meet you this way. All right, look at this. Encountering Jesus will not be what you expect. Look in verse 7 through 9. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. His closest people are confused. They go to buy meat. What does Jesus say? Hey, I'm thirsty. Give me something to drink. They don't ask, hey, Jesus, what can we pick you up through the drive through in town? What do you want to drink? Do you want, you want sugar in your tea or do you want it unsweet? No, they just go off to go buy meat. And Jesus is there. And here's this woman that comes. 
He saith unto her, Give me drink. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask me to drink, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. I mean, look at this. When you encounter Jesus, it won't be what you expect. What time did this woman come? She comes at noontime. In the heat of the day. Why in the world? What did mama always say? Don't want work harder, work what? Smarter. If you're carrying pots of water, why come at noon? Well, she has a lifestyle. Even in the town that she lives. If she comes at noon, she don't have to mess with anybody else. Isn't that how we treat church sometimes? We try to just slip in. Kind of get lost in the shuffle where people don't notice. Well, we don't want to have to deal with people. We don't want people to ask too many questions about us. She comes at noon. She's a Samaritan. Jesus is a Jew. Folks, in Bible times, that's not a good mix, is it? I mean, we are hearing all kinds of things nowadays about racial things. Man, we haven't seen nothing yet. But a Jew and, and a Samaritan, that just did not work. Jesus is a man. She's a woman. You don't go touching because you'll become unclean. Jesus, he's asking for water. Not worried about becoming unclean. Listen, when we encounter Jesus, it will not be what you expect. We expect Je we expect. To meet Jesus on our own expectations. And many times, Jesus has a different plan. We have preconceived notions. Just like in our opening story, we get the idea that we can only experience Jesus in a certain way. It has to be under this tree or that tree. It can't be in that corner of the building or this corner of the building. It has to be that pew or that pew. And as long as everything works in that area, everything's okay. But here's the deal. Jesus likes to surprise and to remind you and I who's in control. He wants us to experience the living God, but he wants us to experience him his way. And when we encounter Jesus, it will not be what we expect. But here's the other thing. When we encounter Jesus, it will address questions you don't know you need answers. Look in verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and, and the well is deep. From whence then uh, hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. This woman comes to the well focusing on literal refreshing water to drink water that she can take back to cook with at home or, or clean with at home in her mind she's asking for something after jesus speaks of hey if you can cut my my job my time in half give me that 
if I don't have to thirst again, give me whatever that water, that literal water is that, that I don't have to come back to this place. I don't have to carry the pots. We're not talking about the, 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 the Tupperware pitchers. How many still have some of those? We're not talking about those Tupperware pitchers. We're talking about cisterns that, that they would have to carry and then not only carry them empty, but fill them up and get them back home wherever it may be. Hey, if I can do something where I don't have to carry those things again, great. If I can connect with Jesus and my life just gets easier, great. But that's not the encounter that Jesus is talking about. That's not the encounter that, that he wants for us. Listen, she had never heard of the living water. The only water she knew about was the kind you drink. Listen, when you encounter the living God, he will reveal things to you that you don't know or realize. You may come into church thinking, oh, I need this. And when you encounter the living God, he reveals to you questions that you didn't even know when he speaks. You know, that's why it's so important to be a group of people that's in God's word. That's why I'm so excited about, at the same time, encouraging each other to be in God's Word as we journey through God's Word this year together and, and in prayer to God. Because it's through His Word that He speaks to us. And when we open up, listen, we will encounter Him and He will address questions that, that we didn't even need, know needed answers. Listen, she had no idea that she needed to be saved. She didn't know she needed to meet the living God. She didn't know that the living God was talking about a, a, a water that quenches eternal thirst. Until she met the living God. When you encounter Jesus, not only will it address questions that you don't know you needed answers, but when you encounter Jesus, it will reveal the dark parts about you. See, that's why I think many come into church and don't want to be changed. We know we're sinners. Why is it, husbands, that we get so upset when our wives point out our mistakes? We know we made mistakes. You don't have to tell us. True? Well, if we would probably half grow a brain and realize that we did really made mistakes and not the words and just say the words but we know we make we don't like people telling us we're wrong do we see when we encounter the living god he will reveal the dark parts of our lives that need to be changed because the dark parts of our lives cannot m m mix with the, the holy righteousness of God. And look what encountering Jesus did with this lady. He says in verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said, Well, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou hast it now is not your husband. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Listen, Jesus sees what is, pa what pa what is past. He zeroes in on the heart. He can pinpoint the real condition. Listen, the only way that Jesus could know what was at this woman's house in her home, what was in her past, was that Jesus is God. Listen, the same way Jesus knows about you. He sees what's within. He knows if he is here, even if he wasn't present, he knows us. 
But Scripture probably where two or three are gathered in, in His name, He's in the midst. He knows if you came through that door and if you're sitting here this morning and your heart is dark. He knows if, if, that sin, if that heart is filled with sin. He knows you don't have to spill it to Him. And many times we don't want to encounter God because we don't want Him to tell us what we're doing wrong. Even though we know exactly what we're doing is wrong. Well, I just don't like it that way. Well, I know. How many times have you heard? Well, I know what God's Word says. But. I know what God wants me to do. But. I know what is right, but oh, it's too hard. It, it, it doesn't, it's not benefiting me right now. I, I, I don't want to be a part of it. See, when we encounter the living God, he will reveal the dark parts of our lives because he pinpoints right what needs to change. No matter how we may try to fix it up, we like the little fluff here and a little fluff there and, and fool everybody. And boy, it's easy to do that with church, attending church, isn't it? How many times have you pulled yourself out of bed? Life is a wreck. You don't feel like coming. But you get up, you go through the shower, get your cup of coffee, put on a nice outfit and you come and you sit and you are a wreck and broken and crying and screaming on the inside. But everybody sees the outside, don't they? And you don't want anybody to let in because if they see what's really the storm that is going on on the inside. Oh, they, they'll think differently of me. Listen, folks, we've been there. You and I both are guilty of coming through church doors, sitting in pews, making the outside look good, and not letting buddy inside because it is all tore up. It is dark. It is dirty. It is messed up. It's screwed up. It's tore up. It, I mean, there's battles raging. And, and oh, what are they going to think about me? Yes, we are guilty of stabbing our own in the back when they're wounded. That's why it's so important as we're in current, when encountering the living God that we're engaging others. We're encouraging each other. It all, see, a church that is on fire for God, we, we've got to get to a point where we're not afraid to let people in. Therefore, we've got to be people that love Christ-like. You see, when we encounter God, guess what? Boy, he pinpoints those dark places, just like he did with this lady. He knows if you're ready to worship. He knows what's in your heart. He knows if you're playing games. Guess what? God doesn't have to look at a financial statement. He knows if you're giving He knows why you're serving. God knows. And when we encounter him, guess what? And if we're willing and wanting to truly encounter him, he will pinpoint to those areas in our lives that need to be fixed. This lady had some sin that needed to be forgiven. She needed a Savior. So what did Jesus do? He pinpointed right to the need to show her who he was. And who he is. He knows what kind of attitude we have. Listen, when we encounter living God, he will reveal the deep parts. He did that with Isaiah in chapter 6. Why was Isaiah, pardon me, why was Isaiah so scared? I've just seen the living God and I'm a man of unclean lips. Reveal what the need was and what did God do? He was touched. See, God doesn't reveal the deep parts in our lives to bash us. 
but he reveals the dark parts in our lives to cleanse us. When we encounter him, he'll do that. He will show those dark places that need to be changed. Listen, when we encounter living God, he will get to the true heart of the issue. Look in verse 20. And our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when thou ye shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know, uh, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worship, worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And woman saith unto him, I know the Messiah cometh which is called Christ, when he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Listen, Jesus knows what needs to be done. What did this woman do? She tried to, to kind of skirt around it a little bit. Well, what about worship? What is true worship? You say worship is in Jerusalem. We say worship's over here. How many times are we just like this lady and try to skirt around the main issue? We miss, we minor on the, we major on the minor and miss the major. How many times do we let piddly questions interfere with our encounter with Jesus? You know, for us, how many times do we, does, do we allow legalism to interfere with our encounter with Jesus. Well, we got to do it this way. This is the only way that, that we can truly encounter Jesus. We got to be doing this. Listen, that's nothing more than just two boys playing hide and seek and not letting the third because hey, we only have two trees here. What about that rock over there that you can hide behind? What about that pond down back behind the pond? Who, why, why is hide and seek all about just two trees? You see what I'm getting at? Many times we do church the same way. We can all do it this way or that way. Listen, she asked where to worship. No, we do. We ask how can we truly worship? Are we allowed to sing these songs? Or these songs. We tie in worship with singing, don't we? Some may say, well, song only has to stand behind a pulpit. Some, they just follow us and do it the right way. We'd have someone at the keyboard, right? Some will say, well, well, we like stringed instruments. Oh, no, we can't have strings. Well, but it is in the Bible. I mean, that, that's kind of a head scratcher. Oh, I, want, I, I, I feel like I want to raise my hands. Well, oh no, we can't do that, but we find that in the Bible. And I, I, I want to make a joyful noise and I like clapping. Oh no, we can't do that. We've got to be silent. But we see, we see people standing and, and making noises and we've allowed ball games to steal our excitement from the living God. Ball games may be fun for a moment, but what happens when it's over? It's over. But the living God is forever, amen? She's talking about where, can, where is the right way to worship. We ask, how can we worship? She's, she was wondering, can I talk to this Jew? You know what we do? We ask, can we do that? Is that really allowed? We've never done that before. In my office, I have a book by two pastor sons. They're, they're well-known pastors now, and they grew up in the ministry underneath their fathers, and they wrote a book together. And the title is, Can We Do That? It's about doing church creatively. But what, what a title, because we hear that all the time. Can we do it? Well, I don't know. We've never done that before. Can we play hide and seek? No, can we? 
I mean, we do have, we got two trees here, and there's actually one in the back right over here that, you know, the third guy can, I guess we could play hide and seek. We don't necessarily need just two trees. See, she was thinking up, just showing up, getting some water, and going home. How often do we think we're just going to show up, get a little something, something here at church, and go home and not be changed? Listen, when we encounter the living God, he'll get to the true issue of the heart. It's not about the place. What do you say? There's coming a day you've got to worship God in spirit and in truth. But here's the other thing I want us to close today with is when you encounter Jesus, the living God, it will send you to, out to tell others about him. It'll send you out to tell others about him. Look at verse 27. Upon this came his disciples and, and marveled that he talked with a woman. Well, that's a lot. We see that in church, don't we? Marvel that you're doing it that way? Marvel that you're talking to a woman? A Samaritan? Yet no man said, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman, and here's the thing, the woman left her water pot, that big cistern that she was getting, left it and went her way into the city. And Scripture says, say to the men, come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did is, is not this the Christ. Then they went out of the city and, and came unto him. Can I ask a personal question this morning? When was the last time you went out and told someone, hey, I've encountered the living God. Come with me. You know what? Sadly, there's probably some that have never even told someone else about the living God. Maybe you haven't told someone else about the living God because you've never encountered the living God yourself. Because when you encounter the living God, He, he changes. From the point of salvation, when, when you're saved, boy, remember when that, you were first saved? How many understood everything about the Bible when they were first saved? You're crazy, Pastor. I still don't know anything about the Bible. That's why we need to be in the Bible every day this year going through it because we don't know what's in the Bible. Because God, what? He reveals more and more. But, but that moment when we were saved, we didn't know anything about we, theologically about the Bible. But boy, we knew that, that Jesus did something in me. Well, I, I, we knew that there was an encounter and we went and we were telling people. As a kid, we were excited. That vacation Bible school, that, that week at church camp, that, that changed everything for your life. Listen, when you encounter the living God, it's going to send you to tell others. You may have encountered the living God through salvation. Listen, when you come to church or take part in church and, and worshiping, if we're encountering the living God, we're going to want to go out and say, hey, come with me. I know where you can find answers for the things that you're dealing with in life. You need encouragement. I know where you can find encouragement. You need love. I know where you can find love. You need prayer. I know where you can find prayer. See, encountering the living God will do that. When you encounter the living God, you won't be able to remain silent. See, for us to love God, love people, we need to realize we exist first and foremost to encounter the living God. Allowing God just to, to just 
penetrate our life. I think that's why we don't see powerful churches. Is we want God to just show up a certain way. What is it in your life that you need to give over, let go of, to encounter God? Maybe you're here this morning and you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus. You can't do enough stuff, my friends. Listen, you, there is no possible way to do enough good stuff to, to make things right. You need to encounter Jesus as Savior. Maybe you're this, this morning and you need to encounter Jesus and be reminded that, you know what, I'm saved to be a servant. Maybe you need to encounter Jesus because you just for so long have had the, the name Christian or, or, or follower or saved and you're just like the two boys in our first story. Uh, anything between this tree and this tree is okay. Maybe you're this one and say, you know, Lord, I, I need to take away the boundaries in my life. I, I want to encounter you. I, I, want, I, need to be, I want to hear from you. I need that encouragement from you. We're going to have a song of response here in a moment. You know, maybe it's time we just use this altar and say, God, we're pouring it all out to you. As an individual, I want to encounter you. As one of the Lord's church, we want to encounter you. And we want that to flow into everything else in our lives. Because when we truly encounter Him, we'll be changed. We'll be changed. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Lord, I thank you that when we encounter you, that you do not leave us unchanged. And Lord, I just come before you and, and Lord, just ask for forgiveness the times that I come before you and think, oh, nothing's being changed. Or I read your word and I just close up your word and don't give it a second thought, Lord, and the, the times of not changing are not you, Lord, but it's me. And it's my heart. And it's my attitude. Lord, I thank you that whenever men and women encounter you, you, you will change them if they let you. Lord, I pray that we as a church will be a church that exists to encounter you, the living God. And when we do, Lord, you change us in a phenomenal way. Lord, as we sing, our Lord, I pray that we'd respond according to your will this morning. Lord, may your will be done. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to please stand. As we sing, what is your, your response this morning to encountering the living God?